This morning's project is to uh, check the hydraulic pressure on the mini excavator. And in order to do that, I had purchased this kit off of Amazon. Uh, the brand name on it is Alame Nova, I guess. Uh, it's just one of those names that they come up with for the same product. There's a hundred different brands of these uh, with price ranging from uh, say 110 bucks to, to, to 250 or more, which all look identical to me. Uh, since they all looked identical to me, I bought the cheapest one I could find, which was $109.99 shipped. And uh, in just a moment, I'll add a screenshot of uh, the page that shows my order that shows the store where this came from. Uh, but in any event, if you open it up, and it's, it's one of these nice little boxes similar to a, a pistol box. Uh, it's got a bunch of test lines to use in it. And then the next layer has gauges that are in bar and in PSI uh, that range uh, different pressure ranges. Uh, we're going to want one that's going to show around 2500 uh, plus or minus PSI uh, because uh, it's my understanding that the uh, pressure on these small mini excavators should be set around 2500 PSI. Uh, if you look on the uh, the uh, groups and whatnot, some people set them higher. I'm gonna try to stick around 2,500 PSI, uh, you know, because the higher you get, the more likely your seals will, uh, will, you know, start to leak. And uh, that's something that I certainly don't want to happen. I speak a lot of 2,500 PSI in this video, which seems to be the consensus on various Chinese mini excavator groups as to the proper pressure. But Peter Terso pointed out to me that 2320 PSI is actually the operating pressure listed in the Y manual. So I wanted to put that manual page up. I may or may not reduce the pressure to 2320. In any event, mine came set low. There's actually no reason that I know of to test the pressure on this machine other than so that I know what it is, that I have a baseline. To me, the thing, you know, lifts and digs and does what it's supposed to. So my guess is that it is set pretty close to 2,500 PSI. Uh, but from my personal knowledge, I want a baseline. I want to be able to know. And because I don't really have any experience with any other machine uh, in this class or any other class really other than tractors, I'm just assuming that it's doing what it's supposed to do. And I want to know if it is or not. Uh, this is the gauge of the ones uh, that I see in here uh, that would probably work best for us from 0 to 4,000 PSI or 0 to uh, 250 or so bar. Uh, there's one or two more in there that have, uh, you know, have that range on them, uh, but this one's probably the best one to use as it is, uh, it is set out for the 2500s up here and you'll be able to see it a little better. I'll be able to see it a little better. So I'm gonna set that aside. In addition to that, there's a, a bunch of straight on connectors in here. Don't know whether or not I'll use those. Uh, you guys are experiencing this for the first time uh, with me. And in addition to that, the bottom layer has a whole bunch of uh, various size T connectors. Uh, these you can use to put uh, in line uh, and, and still hook up uh, the uh, cylinder or motor or whatever it is that you're uh, that you're near. I think there may be a, a, a hydraulic test port on this machine. I'm going to look and see. Uh, but with that little introduction, I'm going to go over to the machine. Then we'll try to find some place to hook this thing up and test the pressure. So I've already taken the liberty of taking the floor mat off and I see that Miss Tootsie here has found it. It apparently doesn't. I wouldn't think it provides a whole lot of comfort, but uh, she seems to think that it's better than just laying on the concrete. I'm gonna take that panel off and I'm gonna take uh, uh, all or most of uh, this these panels off here. 
Uh, if I remember correctly, these are three millimeter Allen wrenches and I don't know, these are 12, 13, 14 millimeters uh, sockets. I'll have to check and see. Okay, so these bolts are uh, 13 millimeter. And I probably don't need to take these off for this, but I just wanted to check everything. Uh, you know, everything's tight still uh, from the last time that I had it off. I need to remove this three millimeter uh, Allen head uh, bolt, this one, this one, this 10 millimeter bolt, this 10 millimeter bolt, this 10 millimeter bolt. And there should be corresponding ones on the other side. Uh, yeah, one here and then another 10 millimeter uh, nut down there. I think that'll get it loose. We'll try that to begin with and see if that plate comes off. Uh, and determine whether we need to move, remove anything else or not. All right, so when you get that off, you are faced with this big plate here. Uh, I believe this is going to be uh, the relief valve where the pressure is tested. That may be a test port. I'm going to go ahead and, and move this plate just so I have a little a little more room to work and I can see a little bit All better. Right, to uh, move, remove this plate, all it was was uh, one 10, ten millimeter bolt here and and uh, one three millimeter uh, Allen head uh, bolt here and then same thing on the opposite side. Um, so this is uh, this is all your hydraulic lines. This is going to be uh, where you adjust the pressure. So there's this uh, locking nut and there's an feels like an Allen head uh, bolt under it. And uh, what you would do to adjust the pressure uh, is crack this nut here and then move the uh, Allen head in there. Okay, so what I've done is taken the uh, Allen head plug out where the uh, paper towel is there on the side. I'm hoping that that's a test port. Uh, this is the plug that came out. It's an eight millimeter Allen uh, head. And, um, you know, it's in there pretty tight because it's kind of painted on. You have to pop it out. Uh, it's got a little seal in there. In the test kit box, this item here labeled G3 slash eight or G3 eights uh, fits that hole. And on the other end, it's got a cap that you can take off and hook the um, hook the test line to. I've set it up here. There's the test line ready to go on. And I've put the gauge in the cup holder. Uh, so maybe it'll stay in there when I test it. All right, so that's the uh, 3 8 adapter in there uh, with the cap off. Uh, you're gonna lose some oil when you take it off. It's gonna come out. But I'm gonna put the, uh, put the test line on there and, and see if this one will work. If not, uh, we'll move to one of the lines on the boom. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, uh, find the things that I need to adjust the uh, pressure relief valve and go up to 2500. The uh, lock nut right here is an 18 millimeter wrench. And just as a little warning, mine, mine was, was loose on there, so you might want to check that. 
uh, regardless of whether you need to adjust the pressure. And then there's an Allen, um, Allen bolt in the center of it. And it is um, six millimeters. And so what you do is loosen the lock nut and turn the uh, Allen wrench. And what I'm gonna do is uh, crank it up and I'm, I'm gonna use the blade, uh, pulling the blade up, cause that's, that's the easiest one for me to get to, I think. Either that or pulling the stick back, cause I've got it all the way back. Uh, remember when you do this using the test port, uh, you need to have the uh, item all the way in. Uh, so it'll build up maximum pressure or otherwise uh, you're gonna jostle the machine all the way around. Uh, you would have noticed when I was moving things to get them lined up, they weren't going up to full pressure. They go up to full pressure when they reach uh, the end of their stroke or if they're obstructed uh, like you're digging or whatever. So let me get this thing cranked back up and adjust this pressure. Let me say this, um, I, I had the, the throttle up, you know, three quarters or more of the way, uh, that way it didn't stall out and I knew I had full pressure. So we're gonna call that good. Um, and uh, that should give me a little bit more oomph, which would be nice. Uh, I thought it had pretty good power as it was. I'll, uh, I'll see after I use it some today, uh, if it's actually, uh, any stronger. I've got a couple of little things I'll probably do. Move some firewood and I think there's a couple of potholes in the driveway that I need to dig out. Uh, so I'll see if it feels any different. Little tip when putting this cover back on. Uh, start the screws. Start them all but don't tighten them uh, because uh, otherwise it'll, it'll throw the holes off. Also on these two right here you're gonna to have to pull up probably from the inside uh, to get the uh, uh, threaded nuts there to uh, meet up with the bolts. Uh, I just took a, a screwdriver and stuck through there and lifted up on it. And uh, anyway, got that back together. All right, so the uh, power after uh, up in the pressure is actually quite noticeable to you when you're on the machine. Uh, the only 
kind of trade-off is, and it's a minor one and a temporary one, uh, is that the uh, sticks were a little more sensitive uh, due to having the additional power at, uh, at tap. So uh, you get to that pretty fast as your uh, motor skills, uh, you know, adapt to it. Uh, other than that, you know, the machine tracks a little better now. It's easier at turning. Um, I can pick up more weight. Before, I could not pick up these large uh, logs. This one is uh, 19 inches in diameter and about four and a half feet long. Uh, I could kind of get some of the weight off the ground and slide it in with the stick and then pick it up. But now I can, I can pick it up uh, on out there, as you can see here in the video. Uh, the second one I pick up, even though it looks smaller, uh, shorter, it's actually heavier. Uh, it also plowed through uh, old gravel better than, uh, than it did before. So overall, I'm happy with it. Uh, it doesn't really add any more speed, but it makes uh, things easier to do and easier to do uh, uh, more than one movement at a time. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, I'm going to sign off now.